In this lesson, we introduce the fundamental concept of linear least squares estimation for estimation problems in which the observation model is linear. Well, for a linear observation model, the m element observation vector y is related to the unknown n element parameter vector x by the multiplication with an m by n observation matrix h. Now for our study, we'll assume that the number of observations is greater than or equal to the number of parameters, and we'll assume that the observation matrix is full rank. That is, the rank of the observation matrix will be equal to the number of unknown parameters. As an example, suppose that the observation matrix is 3 by 2 so that the observation has 3 elements and the parameter has 2. The observation space, then, might be represented as the standard three-dimensional space where the first column of the observation matrix is the vector 4, 3, 0, as shown here, and the second column, negative 2, 3, 0, is shown here. Now, in the absence of observation uncertainty or noise, the observed vector should be somewhere in the two-dimensional space that is spanned by these two columns of the observation vector. If, for example, the parameter vector has the values 1, 0, then the noise-free observation would be as shown here. One unit of the first column, zero units of the second. And we'd estimate the parameter correctly because it would result in a perfect prediction of the observation. Likewise, if the observation is as shown here, we'd estimate the parameter vector as 0, 1. And if the observation is here, we'd estimate the parameter vector as 1, 1. One unit of the first column, one unit of the second column. Now, provided the observation is somewhere in the range for the matrix H, we can find an estimate for the parameter vector that perfectly predicts or perfectly matches the observation. If, however, Measurement uncertainty causes the observation vector to deviate from the range for the observation matrix, or if we have a poorly modeled problem, then we won't be able to get a perfect fit between the parameter and the model. A natural approach to this situation might be to find the point in the measurement range that is closest to the observation. To do that, we could project the observation onto the observation range as shown here, and then determine the parameter values that correspond to the point as it projects onto the measurement range. In this case, that would be 0 units of the first column and negative 1 unit of the second column. So our estimate would be 0 and negative 1. This general idea results in an error vector that is orthogonal to the range space for the observation matrix. That is, our estimate of where we think the observation would have been, and the actual observation has an error associated with it, and that will always be orthogonal to the range of the observation matrix. Now, this general idea is often referred to as the orthogonality principle for linear least squares estimation. Now, mathematically, we can derive the form for this estimator as follows. First, we'll define the linear least squares estimator as the solution to the least squares optimization for the linear observation model. Then, because the optimization function is convex, we can find the minimum by setting the gradient to zero, where the squared error is the norm squared of the difference between the observation and the prediction for a particular parameter vector. When we differentiate this with respect to the parameter vector, with respect to each element of the parameter vector, we'll get negative 2 times the transpose of the observation times the obs uh, observation matrix times the observation, plus 2 times the transpose of the observation matrix times the observation matrix times our guess for the parameter. Now, if we set this equal to 0, this specifies that the linear least squares estimate of the is the solution to this system of equations, which, when h is full rank, can be written as h transpose h inverse times h transpose times the observation. And that would be our linear least squares estimate of the parameter vector x from an observation y. 
In many situations, though, we don't need to invert the matrix HTH, and instead it might be more computationally advantageous to just simply solve this system of equations. Now as an example, let's look at how we might use MATLAB to solve the linear least squares problem from our previous example. Well, first we could set up the observation matrix as 4, negative 2, 3, 3, 0, 0. First column, 4, 3, 0. Second column, negative 2, 3, 0. And here, the first column is this highlighted vector. And the second column is this highlighted vector. And those define the range space for the observation. Now, the observed vector might be 2, negative 3, 1, which we've shown here. And then we can compute the solution using the matrix inverse, which would be the inverse of h transpose h times h transpose times y. Or we can use MATLAB's backslash operator for solving the system of equations. Now either way will produce the linear least squares estimate of 0 minus 1. Regardless of the problem setup, when we approach linear least squares estimation problems, these are tools we'll use for any of those problems in which the observation matrix has full rank.